Most of us just want to feel good, look good and live a long healthy life. That is why you should think that by now we had developed a straightforward consensus on what our eating habits should be to achieve this. Sadly, we are faced with countless views and thoughts on this topic. When I look on Amazon right now, I find over 200,000 different books about different diets. So it is naturally that everyone, including you, is confused on what diet you should take. In this animation, I am very happy to share with you the knowledge I gathered the past period about the diet in which I have a lot of faith and I explain with different arguments why I came to this conclusion. In this video I will tell you in a simple and pleasant animated way about some history about fasting, about what blood glucose, insulin and ketosis do, what the benefits of fasting are, some famous examples of fasters and how my first days of fasting went and how I experienced them. Let's look to what we are used to through conventional wisdom. We learn from early on that you need to get three balanced meals a day to stay healthy, namely breakfast, lunch and dinner. These are as natural as sleeping or going to the bathroom. And being sent to bed without dinner is a punishment or is seen as child abuse. Where does the three meals a day idea come from? Have you ever asked yourself this? Abigail Carroll suggests in her book Three Squares The Invention of the American Meal that eating three meals a day was basically invented due to culture. When European settlers got to America they found that Native Americans were basically just eating whenever they felt the urge to, rather than at specific times. But the Europeans saw this more as evidence that they were uncivilized and taught them to eat three meals a day. Sadly, this is not based on our biological needs. Let's go back again to let's say a few thousand years ago, when we lived more in a hunter-gatherer culture. When looking back a few thousand years, our body would have had to adapt to how often the food was available. There were no shops or markets, so it seemed logic that there was not always something to eat. So we ate all we could when we had the chance and until we had found new food, we did not eat until there was another big source of fat and protein. But how about the life expectancy, then and now, some would say. Well, Doug McGriff did his study about this and explains to us that in the early ages there were older survivors and the fossil evidence of those older survivors tell us that they were extraordinarily robust people. But the average life expectancy was a few thousand years ago much lower than now, right? Yes, that is correct. Averagely they probably became not older than 33 years. But keep in mind the fact that in those times children died a lot at birth and this had a big negative impact on the average rate. Modern civilization and technology makes sure that our infant mortality rate is much higher and you can live longer although a person who has weak genetic material or a weak body. Logic would say that when we make our bodies more robust and strong, this would also make our life expectation much much higher and pleasant. But hey, you need to eat 3 meals a day to keep your blood glucose stable to survive, don't you? The common misconception is that a stable blood glucose is necessary for survival which would biologically justify 3 meals a day. Understand why constantly consuming carbohydrates to maintain blood glucose is not only unnecessary but can be a detrimental and vicious cycle. So after you ate some carbohydrates glucose enters the bloodstream and insulin is secreted to distribute the glucose probably by a insulin receptor and glucose enters the cells to produce energy. This can only happen at a certain rate to avoid overloading and damaging the cell. 70 grams can be stored in the liver and 200 grams in the muscle. So you have your morning bagel and something else and you have stored all the glucose you can store in your liver and muscle. So the rest has to be stored in your body fat. The problem is that if your energy level starts to wane you can't tap the energy out of your stored body fat, because the hormone that does that, hormone sensitive lipase, 
is sensitive to insulin. Insulin will not allow you to tap body fat for energy if you have a bunch of insulin sitting in your blood for processing a bunch of glucose that you ate before. And when you need energy, you're going to get very hungry. And you will need to jack up your blood sugar in short term with a snack or something to raise your energy level again. Again, this is why when you're following the recommend conventional diets or eating pattern, you are usually going to be stuck in this loop of wanting to eat every time your blood glucose drops, even when your body has stored energy enough elsewhere. And eating three meals a day will feel very necessary again. Ketosis to the rescue. If you stop eating glucose for about 10 to 12 hours, your glucose stores will deplete and your body will start breaking down fat so that the liver can produce something called ketone bodies. Ketone bodies produce energy for your cells through similar pathways as glucose but are much more stable, efficient and don't cause complications like glucose can do to your cells. Tim Noax from Cape Town University did a study about this and tells us that humans have a absolutely no requirements for carbohydrate. Not one gram do we require cause we have this fabulous liver that produces as much glucose as your body requires. Now let's talk about the benefits of fasting. The concept of fasting for health benefits has been around for quite some time. An Egyptian pyramid inscription from around 3800 BC was found tells already about fasting. The best known benefits in these modern times are weight loss, good for people with diabetes type 2, heart disease, cancer, liver disease and in general just to feel better and for mental clarity. These are so many amazing benefits and there are more. The process of aging simplified. To simplify an incredible complex process, aging in essence is the result of cumulative damage to your DNA. Professor of genetics David Sinclair and his team found that certain proteins are responsible for DNA repair and have been identified as a key factor in a long healthy life. Science learns us that if you take any organism on the planet Earth, like spiders, insects, rabbits, dogs, and you reduce their caloric intake by 30%, they live 30% longer. The only organism which has not yet been deliberately tested by scientists are us humans. Now some famous examples. Let's start with Dr. Bert Herring. Like I described in a previous video, former Air Marshal Dr. Bert Herring looked in 2004 in the mirror and saw that he had become an old man. Not because of his wrinkles and grey hair, but because of his man boobs, his love handles and his under skin. As a doctor, he knew that medically there is no reason why men and women above 40 should not have a tight skin like a 18 year old. So he picked up his old study books and started looking at researches of the last 20 years and came up with an astonishing conclusion. People are not made to eat all day, not even for eating three times a day. And so he developed the Fast 5 diet. If you want his ebook, just send me an email and I will send it to you for free. Wim Hof Wim Hof has also shown that you can achieve almost unhuman things while just eating once a day. He is known by many people, but if you don't know him yet, I made a very interesting video about his story as The Iceman. A 27 year old Scotsman. I read an article about this Scottish man who fasted and lived a year on his own body fat. He only consumed water and vitamin supplements. By this way he reduced his body weight from 207 kilograms to just 82 kilograms, a massive loss of 
125 kilos. And he completed the fast with no ill effects. That other famous one is Plato. Plato apparently fasted for greater mental efficiency. Hippocrates, who is considered the father of modern medicine, he famously said, our food should be our medicine, our medicine should be our food, but to eat when you are sick is to feed your sickness. He talks about our fasting instincts. For example, when you are very sick, you normally don't feel the need of eating. Benjamin Franklin, who was world renowned as one of the smartest men who had ever lived, what he said was, the best of all medicine are resting and fasting. The Holy Bible. In the Bible there are many prescribed periods of fasting all through the year, to balance all the feasting, to cleanse the body, to cleanse the soul. Buddhist monks. They do fasting on a daily basis, typically from noon until sunrise the next day. Then we have Mark Twain, suggest, he suggested fasting to be more effective than any medicine. And professor of neuroscience Mark Madsen showed how fasting promotes the growth of new neurons in the brain. This explains why fasting is linked to the prevention of neurodegenerative diseases like Parkinson and Alzheimer. Another researcher, Upton Sinclair, who was born in the late 1800s and lived to his well age of 90, published a book in 1911 called The Fasting Cure. The book was inspired by the personal accounts of 215 people who cured some ailments with extended fasting. Then we have Dr. Alan Goldhammer. He spoke about how in 2012 a 42 year old patient cured her cancer stage 3 follicular lymphoma with a 21 days fast. And for last I want to tell you about a BBC documentary about fasting. In 2013 I saw a BBC documentary called Eat Fast and Live Longer in which Michael Mosley set himself a truly ambitious goal. He wants to live longer, stay younger and lose weight in the bargain. And he wants to make as few changes to his life as possible along the way. He discovered the powerful new science behind the ancient idea of fasting and he was thrilled that he found a way of doing it and that he still was able to enjoy his food. Michael tests out the science of fasting on himself with life-changing results. So when we review all that I spoke of, you see that many sources are pointing to the key here, being that whether you are doing extended fasting, intermittent fasting or simply eating less, you are giving your body a chance to deplete its glucose stores and dip into ketosis, leading to really many health benefits. How does it look in practice and what are my experiences with it? We now covered what I have heard and learned from others. But how does this fasting go in practice? Day 1 Well, I stand up in the morning like always, drink my glass of water and some glucosamine and omega 3 and 6. And the only difference is that I don't eat, eat a breakfast. I noticed that I don't really miss this meal and because this week I am free from work, I start working around my house building a woodlock shed. When the clock hits around 11 am, I feel a urge to eat something, but my stomach does not particularly hurt and I notice that it's more a habit than that I really feel hunger. By just noticing it, accepting it and going on with my work, the feeling goes away already and I get a feeling of victory because I am in control of my body now and I am not letting my body and habits control me. Around this time I get the first question of my wife if I don't want to lunch. And I explain to her that I don't feel hungry and that I have enough energy from all the food I had yesterday. And I save myself 30 minutes of time that I now could use for my build. Around 4pm 
I feel confidence that I'm getting hungry, but I still have to wait another 60 minutes until 5 pm. I read that this feels like pushing through a last set of squats, but I did not feel this so extreme. I felt more a positive thing, namely a kind of adrenaline. It felt as if my body really needed this detoxing after all the dinners I had lately, and I'm doing it. The only really thing I negatively noticed was the dry lips I suddenly had, but this could easily be solved by drinking some more water than I normally do. But because I'm working outside, I totally neglect these signals and when I had already dry lips I thought about it and got me some water. Just after 5 pm I got my first meal, and it felt really rewarding and good. I expected that I would eat more than normal to fill my stomach, but I noticed that I eat the same as normal and it felt like putting new wood in the fireplace. Day 2 The next day felt slightly easier and I noticed that my body felt different from yesterday. And I mean different in a good way. I felt that I'm more in control of my body and I started to feel the mental clarity others talk about and it felt good. On this day I had to explain to two different people who stand close to me that I did not have to eat. And I'm doing a eating once a day fast. My father backed me up and said that he also was thinking to just eat once a day. Day 3 Day 3 started like the other days and I realized that I was not looking at the clock and thinking how many hours I had to go until my evening meal. My body felt different in a good way. I did not feel hunger, but I noticed how often I ran into a habit of hmm, let's have a cookie or something else to snack. But the moment I realized I had that thought, I smiled and thought, I'm in control now and not my habits. And the urge was already gone. Some other thing I really noticed on day 3 was that I enjoyed more my food. It almost feels like a party moment and the taste of all the food I really tasted it again. And in general it really saves me time in the morning and at lunchtime. Time that I now can spend on other things that I enjoy. My wife and daughter had a little flu on my second and third day, but I had none of those complaints. I just felt great in general. My energy levels were stable and I had enough energy to do really heavy physical things. I felt more focused and I started to get less and less problems with the hunger feeling. The only problem I noticed was a slight headache, but this was the result of drinking too little. When I drank some water the headache went away quickly. After the first three days, I read somewhere that the first three days are the hardest, I decided to stick with the fasting and still feel confident that my body has enough energy for me, that my body has more than enough time to empty out whatever excess glucose or toxins I have ingested in my last meal. Did you know that Steve Jobs did basically the same thing every day of his life? Conclusion and expectation. I'm not expecting you to suddenly start eating once a day, but hopefully you can start giving your body a break and eat when you need to, not when the clock says you should. Uh, just one more thing, would you be so kind to put your experience with fasting below this video? This can be a positive or negative experience because nothing can be good for everyone. And this way everyone can learn from it. So this was my video about fasting and my experience with it. Would you be so kind to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel? Namely, this helps to let more people find my videos. And this way you are one of the first to know when I post another video.